My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. We come to the very last day of the year 2020, and tonight we'll celebrate a wonderful feast day in the church, the Vigil of Mary, the Mother of God, which is celebrated each year on January 1st. Mary is truly the mother of God because Jesus is God the Son. As we know from our catechism and our theology and revelation, Jesus is both God and man, true God and true man. And there's only one person in Jesus. It's the person of God the Son, the divine person, the divine word that became flesh. And so Mary, in giving birth to Jesus in his humanity, truly gives birth to God. She becomes the mother of God. What a wonderful thing, what a wonderful mystery that God wished to have a human mother. And she too is our mother, the mother of God and our mother. And we're caught up in this mystery. God, in becoming man, wants us also to enter into his family. He makes Mary his mother, and he also makes each of us, every Christian, in a way, every person, he makes a child of God, sons in the Son, as the fathers of the church used to call us. Because of our divine filiation, we're sons in the Son. In today's gospel, John the Evangelist, in his prologue, says that this is the result of faith, This is what faith in Jesus brings about, a new relationship with God in which we're born, in a certain sense, directly of God. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is the great mystery of God's fatherhood over us, of our sonship in Christ, of our divine filiation. He has made us in Jesus sons and daughters of himself, sons and daughters of God. If we truly believe this, our lives would change radically. Imagine you receive a, a voicemail today on your phone or perhaps an email and it's from Jeff Bezos. And he says, hi there, whatever your name is. <laughs> hi there, George, or hi there, Sarah. Give me a call when you get a chance. And he leaves us his number. And we call him back and he tells us, well, look, I've been doing some... Uh, some research on my uh, my ancestry and my family tree, and I discovered that we are very distant cousins. And you're a little bit skeptical at first, and you're like, well, I didn't know that I, I had any cousins that I hadn't accounted for. And he says, no, but it's true. Trust me, I've got um, I've got the best researchers on this, and we are we are very distant distantly related. Now, Jeff Bezos, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but as of uh, the spring of 2020, Jeff Bezos, who's the uh, founder, CEO of uh, Amazon, makes a lot of money. He makes $321 million per day. That's $13.4 million an hour. That's $222,884 a minute. And that's $3,715 an 
dollars a second. And so Jeff Bezos calls you and says, well, look, you know, we're relatives and I like to take care of my own. And so I don't know if you heard, but, you know, I make um, a lot of money. I make uh, $222,000 a minute, more or less, around there. And I figured since we're cousins, I'll give you a minute a day of my of my earnings. Well, we would be blown away. On the financial level, on the economic level, our lives would never be the same. We would no longer have to think about how to pay for this or how to pay for that. But rather, we would wonder, what am I going to do with all this money? How will I invest it? Who will I help? Who's going to manage it? Your your whole life would change in a certain sense. Well, this is um, just a little glimpse, Lord Jesus, of what you've done for us by making us children of God. By becoming in you, Jesus, a son of God, a daughter of God, each Christian receives much more than anything Jeff Bezos could ever make monetarily. We receive all the love of God, all the love that there is, is ours. Because God the Father loves us in his divine son. He loves us as if he were loving Jesus and not and not us. This is our divine filiation. As Jesus says in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So Jesus, when when he makes us children of God, when you, Lord Jesus, make us children of your Father God, God the Father loves us with the same love, not with a different love, but with the same love with which he loves you, which is an infinite love. It's, it's God himself. God loves us with God himself, with the whole, with the love of the Holy Spirit, the love between the God, between God the Father and God the Son is truly ours. This um, should give us a great confidence in life that, you know, we should worry less about what people think, even what we think about ourselves. Leo Treese once wrote, How sad that knowing how much God loves me, I whine and lament because people don't love me as much as I wish. This is just as foolish as a multimillionaire complaining about losing a a quarter in the slot machine. We have so much grace upon grace, as John says, in today's gospel. In Jesus, we receive grace upon grace. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace, overflowing amount of love. Luis de Moya, a priest who was rendered a quadriplegic in the 1990s and just died recently, said this, I believe an immense love presides over my life. And this is after his accident, of course. I believe an immense love presides over my life and over everyone's, though many people don't realize it. To sum up my problem, I'd say I'm like a multimillionaire who has only lost a few dollars. The richness of our divine filiation, Jesus, the richness of the love that God the Father has for you that you shared with us. And so as we begin this new year and we contemplate Mary, made mother of God, Let's also dare to contemplate God as our Father. At every moment of our life, we're we're receiving much more than $3,000 a second or $200,000 a minute or $13 million an hour or $320 million a day. We're receiving much more, something much more important than that. Something that can lead us into eternal life, eternal beatitude, eternal richness. The love that God has for us in his son, Jesus Christ. And that's a great thing to, to start every day with, every year with, no matter what's happening on the outside in the world, no matter what's happening to us. We have this great treasure 
which is God's love for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Mary, mother of God, pray for us. Help us to realize this great boon. Help us to realize this great dignity that we have as God's children. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect, my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.